So the P30 Pro has officially launched just a few short days ago in Paris, but what are our first impressions? Hey there, welcome along, it's Damien here for 95 Google. These are my ultra quick first impressions of the Huawei P30 Pro. Okay, so we do have a few problems with this device from the very get-go. Unfortunately, if you are in the United States, it probably won't be available officially from any carrier, but of course you can get the device via unofficial means. That said, the P30 Pro introduces so much that the entire industry is bound to take note. For starters, this is just a great looking smartphone all around, especially in the Sunrise Red variant. I can't fault the breathing crystal option either, the two-tone colours really do catch the eye in hand, or anywhere else you have this phone for that matter. New colour options aside, I have to say in all honesty, the camera array and front facing dewdrop notch aside, this feels very much like a Mate 20 Pro Plus. The all glass design is most definitely striking and showcases Huawei's growing expertise in the hardware stakes. Internally though, the hardware almost mimics the Mate 20 Pro to a T. Expect the Kirin 980 chipset, but the RAM is bumped from 6 to 8GB and includes the core additions like 40W super fast charging too. The camera hardware is of course the core selling point of the P series and the P30 looks set to offer one of the most stacked camera setups we've seen in any smartphone release to date. The four rear facing lenses include a 48 megapixel main sensor along with the show stopping hybrid 10 times lossless zoom which is effectively 5 times optical zoom with AR software enhancing digital zoom for very detailed zoomed in photos. Of course the new RYYB sensor is arguably the biggest change that we've seen from smartphone photography for some time. My initial thoughts are that the one snap high ISO images that allow for ultra low light photography without needing long exposure photos are great and all but I've noticed some mixed results. I'll need some time to play with the settings ahead of the upcoming full review. The claim is though that this new sensor can capture up to 40% more visible light within the visible light spectrum and it's clear from my initial tests that this does seem to be the case. Beyond the cameras I do still have a problem with the overall software experience as EMUR feels like it does get in my way at the very least. I've stuck Nova Launcher on already to try and help emulate a stock Android Pie experience but to be honest the look and feel aside this is a very nippy handset. Having criticised Full HD Plus displays in the past, I feel like I need to eat my own words a little as the Full HD Plus display is absolutely fine in practice. Of course I would have loved to have seen a QHD Plus display, but this is rather impressive in person. This small dewdrop notch too isn't much of a distraction and offers much more of that status bar space for notifications for the conscious Android consumer. For me the improved in-display reader is no doubt welcome and one of the best parts of this new display and although it's an optical sensor, I'm finding it's getting closer to the standard fingerprint scanner speed. For starters, the positioning is infinitely better in my opinion, there's no more reaching towards the centre of the display to unlock your smartphone. Overall though, during the short time I've spent with the handset, beyond the camera there is really very little between the P30 Pro and the Mate 20 Pro. Even with that said, the entire package really lays down the gauntlet for upcoming 2019 flagships, but I'll save final judgement for the upcoming full review in the coming weeks. Of course, we most definitely want to hear from you guys in the comments section, Beyond that, hopefully you've enjoyed this super quick hands-on impression of the Huawei P30 Pro. Then before you leave, remember to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. But this is Damien for 95 Google, and I will speak to you later.